Okay, let's get things going here. So again, thanks everybody for, for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to uh, to check out Simcoe Probing. Um, so as you can see on, on the screen that I'm sharing here, uh, I'm just gonna go through a quick little PowerPoint, um, but this is uh, sort of number two in our, our planned 2023 webinar series that I'm doing here. Uh, webinar number one for us was the IMSC, which is True Code, uh, True G Code Verification simulation in Mastercam. If by chance you missed that and wanted uh, to check it out, just shoot me a message and uh, I can get you the recording. Um, next quarter isn't confirmed yet on what I'm going to be doing, but I think potentially it might be Veriserve. So just keep a, an eye out on your emails uh, for that. That'll be coming out likely in uh, maybe a month, month and a half. But, um, I'm just going to do the intro PowerPoint. Then we're going to jump into meat and potatoes and uh you know we'll do the demo then we'll have q a and a little note that uh, we're recording this webinar so if you do want this recording i can share it with everybody after the fact uh, again just let me know um so a little bit about everybody that's here today uh, fan favorite glenn um if you want to just wave glenn i'm sure everybody knows who you are and uh and what you look like um and then we have ryan from simcoe USA joining us, so we really appreciate uh, that, Ryan. And Ryan's here to answer any you know specific questions that say Glenn or I uh, don't have an answer to. So, so this is really, really good. And of course, myself, Lee, um, I know many of you. So, just a little touch on uh, the Simcoe, you know, probing or the Simcoe family of products, more specifically. I think. You know, pretty much everybody's aware of, of Simcoe if you're not already using it. Obviously, we have the like what we like to call the Simcoe uh, Lite version that comes installed with Mastercam. I'm sure most of you are using that, um, you know, and some of you maybe even expanded on that uh, that OEM version and done an upgrade to Simcoe Edit Pro. Uh, but for those of you that, that aren't aware, there, these are some of the other products that we have. Uh, with Simcoe, DNC Max, communications for, for your, your shop uh, floor, NC Base, um, which is a great database for managing your NC programs, MTC Max for the machine monitoring, uh, right on the back of uh, DNC Max as well, um, Simcoe MDM, which is the manufacturing data management, uh, helps organize all of that. Uh, and then rounding things out is the uh, Simcoe machine simulation. There are other products, uh, but these are sort of some of the core ones, if you will, that uh, the Simcoe family has. Um, so a little bit uh, of an intro on, on sort of Simcoe probing. What is it? Um, you know, it's a it's fully integrated add-on for Mastercam. And it makes probing of integrated part, um, Mastercam programming process integrated. Um, so just like you're doing your tool pass, it's, it's, it's essentially how it works. And uh, on my little image that I've got here, you know, measure twice, cut once, everybody loves that. But uh, where you can use it is before machining, during machining, and after machining. So some of the key points that, we, that we're gonna touch on, everything that I'm kind of talking about here, uh, Glenn will be showing on the screen and he'll dive into it. Um, but uh, just to give everybody a, a quick little intro on that, um, how it can be used and what you can use for it is, you know, you can use your sort of predefined uh, probing cycles that are already loaded on the machine. I'm not going to read that. You, everyone can see that okay. Um, surface probing, so it makes it easy to select surface points um, and surface normals on curved geometry. Seamlessly integrated, we already touched on that, but what you'll get is, you know, just like you're used to on your ribbon bar, you'll have one for Simcoe Probe specifically. And uh, from there, you know, your easy selections of your uh, cycles and, and what have you. And then the simulation. So all probe tool movements can be visualized and verified um, in Mastercam's backlog, verify, and uh, of course, machine simulation if you're already utilizing that. So just to touch on sort of the, the, the key or the core sort of uh, supporter controls everybody's familiar with, Fanuc, Siemens, Haas, Heidenheim, Mazak, or Kuma. Um, so these are some of your native cycles that uh, you can utilize with simple probing. And then, of course, here's some of the vendor cycles that you can utilize as well. Again, I'm not going to go through that, just a bit of a picture to show everybody. 
Um, so a little bit of a, just a kind of a quick summary or the, 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 uh, the key points that are, are, are pretty important with the Simcoe probe, and you, you'll see it when Glenn jumps in here. Uh, but you can quickly, easily program CNC touch probes from multiple manufacturers using the predefined probe cycles, seamlessly integrating into MasterCam. It's easy to use. It's the interface that you're used to with MasterCam. You can create probing cycles right off your CAD file, just like you do creating your toolpaths. It's, of course, fully associative, just like toolpaths are. Um, and then, of course, you can use the, the MasterCam's operations for remachining routines, simulate all probe tool movements. And, uh, of course, this is a good uh, low-cost uh, solution and offering that we have. Uh, you know, if, if other people have looked at the other offerings out there, this is uh, fairly well competitive. Um, so that's sort of my bit here. And what I'll do is I'm going to kick it over to to Glenn. All right, thanks, Lee. And if I need any help, I'll call on Ryan to fill in whatever yeah. I'm missing. Okay, so if you just want to, um, you can either grab the screen or what I will do is change it over to you. And uh, you should be at a screen share. There we go. You covered a lot of this already so i'll just start about here so the simco probing is divided into three areas first the part alignment for when you have a part on a multi-axis machine and you want to align it to the z-axis so that might be a b on a horizontal or the a-axis on a vertical the next one is the workpiece datum to pick up your g54 whether it be the corner of the part center of the part or a hole and then Probably the most common is the measurement of the part, which also includes the remachining if it's undersized. So this was touched on already, the controls that were covered. And this is an example of what we do with the data. So we specify which variable to output to. And then on the Haas screen, the newer next generation controls uses 10,000 variable numbers. The FNOOC would use three digits. And the Haas also has on the main screen, it can output the values for what you're measuring. The dprint command will also output either to a memory stick or to your memory as a text file showing the component and the feature, the nominal values, the actual values, and the deviation. And it can be customized a little deeper than that to give you some more description on those. And then the remachining. So it adds the logic to check the feature that's measured, whether it's oversized, undersized, whether to stop the machine because it's scrap or carry on or go back and remachine it, making an adjustment to the tool variable to recut it and then remeasure it again. So the program uses the same. G65P9000 all outs that you, you currently use if you have the uh, Inspection Plus built into your machine. So that makes it simple. You're already familiar with these macros if you're using it. It's just now you can see them in MasterCam. You can program them offline and it's much quicker that way. This is just some explanations on the information that we'll fill in, which I'll go through in a minute when we pull up a part. So FNOOC, this would be the format, hide and hind using this Q parameter method. So those who are familiar with hide and hind will see that. And yeah, probing.com is where you can find out more information on it. So let's get into MasterCam here. So I have a part here, a couple of vices. I'm going to start off by just got different view sheets showing devices and the stock used. So the first operation, cut this side, flip it over, do the other side. So we got two datums to pick up. I want to do some measurement. So let's go through that. I'm not going to get into the programming part of it. You guys are all experts in that. We'll focus in on the probing part. So under the Simcoe tab, this is the 
icon to get into the different features. So this is a three axis vertical. So we're not going to go through the workpiece alignment. We'll get right into the workpiece datum. So the first one we'll do is touch off for the Z axis. So that's a point one axis. These are the tool path parameters. Utilizes the same tool manager. So you can define a custom tool. It's a lollipop tool style. Only thing just specifies the spindle direction, static. We're not spinning the spindle, obviously. And then we go into the cycle. So here, everything's with the right mouse button. So I like to turn on the automatic tool plane selection so I don't have to tell it which plane to use. It uses my active plane. And then I select a point that I want to pick up. So I'll just grab this point here for my Z. And that pulls in the values here. It knows it's negative. And the next thing we specify is our clearance height. So I can type it in or I can just roll the mouse and you can see it grow. The red or the yellow line represents rapid. We'll put in a safety distance. So as I scroll that over, it has nice pop-ups that show you an explanation of what you're doing. Kind of hides the part of it. So I'll just scroll that over a bit. But now you can see the safety distance growing also. So we're going to pick up that point. We're going to put that into our G54. And we're going to do a few different probes. So I'll suppress the on off. So when you go from one cycle to the next, the probe will stay active. It saves a bit of time. That 32 variable G65P9832, which is the on, and 33 is it off. So we accept that. And now we'll pick up the corner. So Simcoe under the datum. So we're going to need a couple options we could use. If it was the center of the part, I could just have it pick up the stock. But I'm going to use corner outside. So this here, select the probe again. Select line. So I just pick up two lines. Suppress the on off. So here, safety distance. I'll put in the clearance height first. Speed it in or roll up the mouse. And then the safety distance. So what you'll see here, as I increase that value, it comes away from the part. So obviously, if the, you know, usually what you do, you'll get the G54 closed. And then, of course, so within a certain distance, you'd have to be within that. So that's why it's nice to make it big. And uh, over travel distance, you can put a value in there, too. So if it is beyond a certain amount, it'll air out rather than trying to chase down the part or hit the part. Now, because I increased, I need to adjust these other values, so the spacing. So here again, I can roll that one in, and then the y-axis, roll that in, so on the part. And I'll come down a little bit deeper. It comes down by half the radius of the ruby, but we'll go a little bit further. And that's also going to be G54. And let's have a look at the other vise. So I'm going to set my plane to the other one, which is going to be G55. And this time we're going to pick up a hole. So it's going to be diameter inside. Select this. Oops, sorry. Pick the probe. Go to the cycle. Right click. Select arcs. Measuring height. Bring that down a bit. Clearance height. And this would be G55. So I'm just going to back plot these to see what we have here. So there it picked up the Z. And then it comes over and picks up the corner for that one. And then for the G55, it picks up the hole for this one. And if I was to post that out, just to see what that looks like. So here's the probe on. 
but it doesn't turn it off. I think on the last cycle, I forgot to turn on the suppressed probes. That's why it came on and off on the last one. So S2 is for G55, S1 is for G54. So nice, small, compact program that if you're familiar with the probing macros, you'll recognize a lot of that. But yeah, I was just going to quickly mention, Glenn, too, like, um, yeah, obviously, if anyone's looking through the code, you know, as, as Glenn mentioned, right, you know, you got the 9832, 9833 probe on and off. Um, but then, of course, you know, protected safety moves to get, you know, to and from the part in between, you know, cycles. Uh, that way, if it were to come up against something, you know, obviously, it's going to uh, stop the machine, you know, uh, without having to, uh, you know, actually break, you know, something as long as it's within those protected safety moves. But but then right exactly then then at least we're we're using the predefined probe cycles that are already you know installed say from the factory or a retrofit at that case without having to uh you know install extra or new and worry about you know what other ones we need to um, be careful of while obviously going out and programming that so yeah thanks ryan okay so now that we've picked up our part we've machined it let's have a look at some inspection so on the left vice here, just going to press Alt T to turn off the toolpath. Let's have a look at this here is for a shaft and a keyway, so it's got a tight tolerance on it. So let's do a measurement now. So workpiece inspection. We're going to do a diameter inside. So you can do four holes. That's outside, or three holes. Three, or sorry, three point pickup. Three points. If you have a machine with a lot of backlash, sometimes your quadrants are a little inaccurate anyway, so maybe three points is adequate. So automatic tool plane selection, just so I don't get prompted for the plane, because it will allow you in a three plus two environment, pick features on different angles. So I'll select arcs, we'll grab the arc that we want to measure. So even though it's not a full circle, that's fine. It will pull in the three pro positions relative to what the circle is. So as I move across these, you can see very graphical interpretation of the parameters. So the measuring height, might come down a little bit. Clearance height, four inches. So here we have a safety distance. So by default, if it's off, it'll just come to the middle and then travel out. So if it's a larger bore, that's going to be a lot, a lot of travel. So you can turn this on and then it will come up in between. Now I'll put in a safety distance of 0.3 and then you can see that there. If there was a boss in the middle or if there was a clamp in the middle, you would need to do it this way. But otherwise you can leave this turned off and you know, do it from there. So the angles of where it does the probing, you can enter that here. So if I said minus. 200, just rotate that around. You can see it adjust as I move. So I'll make this 60. Yeah, so it moves them around based on these angles. So you can dynamically drag them around. So 180 is maximum, sorry. Okay. So Let's have a look at our if-then conditions, because this is a situation where if it's undersized, we want to remachine it. So if it's scrap, we want to just go to the end of the program. No sense wasting time machining the rest. If it needs to be remachined, I need to go to a particular, either a group of operations or one operation. So in this case, it's a single contour. So I'll just go to that operation. And this is where it's important that you have your operations with comments so you can recognize which one's which. So we'll finish the inside bore. And then if it is within tolerance, just carry on machine. So here we're going to output the data. So this is where we have the option to increment the feature that we're measuring or the component. So this would be the one feature, the other vice, sorry, the one component, the other vice would be another component, but within each one, we can have multiple features. So we'll put in our tolerance here. 
And if I do make an adjustment, if the machine needs to make an adjustment, do I make the full adjustment or just 75% of it, just in case, you know, doing a recut may have a bit of deflection, let alone the adjustment. So I don't want to go the full amount. And then the tolerance zone, if it's less than, like I don't want to have to re-machine if it's only a couple thousand, so make, you know, it's within that, that's good enough. And also for this one here. Now these ones here is what gets output in the document. So we will, the true position value, it will give you that also. So just coming up here, the measurement result, these are the values that can be output. So this would be the nominal values, and this would be the actual values, and then the deviation from that. So you'll notice it automatically increments up, like 10,000 is the first variable, and every one I use, it'll know what was used last, so it doesn't overwrite it. And good with that. So if I want to see what that looks like, I'm not going to post out everything, but I do need to post out that other operation. And this way you can see the logic that it uses to do this. So at the top of the program, I have my restart label. So this is just the contour cutting that bore. And then it does the probe. So if it's greater than, so if that variable is greater than 3,000, It'll go to here, which says, okay, just go to the end, it's scrap. If it needs to be remachined, then it'll go to this variable here, which is that one at the top, that line number. And then if it's within tolerance, it just carries on. And this is where the variables at the machine get filled in with those settings. So very straightforward and logical to follow. So let's... Um, do some more measurement on here. So for example, if I want to do a web thickness, so I'll do an angled measurement, so it's not just an X or a Y. We'll measure this web here. We'll just select two lines so you can work off wireframe or solids in my case i have a solids here so i'm yeah the measurement result will reflect so here again you'll see it's incrementing from the last ones measurement height let's bring it down a little bit further zeros on the bottom of this part Safety distance, quarter inch. So you, you can see right away the, mo the motion without even having to back plot it. We'll increment this feature on the output. We're not going to do any remachining, but we're going to output these values. So for the documentation, So I can also measure multiple features at the same time. So we'll do that with these two holes. So diameter inside. The probe. Watching this so many times, you probably could figure I could do that myself now. It's pretty much the same procedure all the way. So as you pick multiple features, they will list here. And of course, some of these items are common to both features. So rather than having to go into each one and edit them, I can right click and do what's called a bundle edit. So for example, my measuring height, fill that in there. Safety distance, I'll leave that off because it's a small hole. Clearance, four inches. 
and that way I don't have to go entering this in for every single feature that I probe. I can just do it for one or apply it to all of them. Now, the measurement that comes out can also go to the bottom here. I can do a feature to feature measurement. So, and that can be done with a XY distance, distance and angle. So, the different options here. So, either two features within one probing cycle or the previous probe cycle. So, that's the type of options you would have at that. So we'll just post these out to get an idea of what we're looking at, and then we'll maybe switch to a Heidenheim format to see the difference with that. Any questions there, Lee, or? So I was on mute there for a second. Uh, just one at this point in time, um, and it's just a question: if if is there uh, does anyone have a video of this running on a machine uh, live? I would say yes. I think YouTube is going to be the greatest uh, location for that. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we have a couple um, that we've tried to put into. Uh, some of our training tutorials. So yeah, if you were to visit probing.com and then go to the support tab, um, there'll be a number of different uh, trainings on there or recordings. And um, we try to uh, increment into some uh, some actual like on machine probing, uh, you know, video footage. Yeah, yeah, there's lots on YouTube for that. I think if to share a video online here, it's a little sluggish sometimes. But yeah, there's lots there. Okay, so I think you've seen enough of going through those menus. They're very similar. So let's have a quick look at a different machine. Just not everybody has, I, not everybody has Fanuc or Haas. So let's have a look at a Heidenheim. So I'm going to do the same procedure, and I'm going to need to copy this inside bore. We'll do that same remachining. I guess I could have used left uh, doing this one. And while you're doing that, Glenn, getting everything set up, I did have a couple uh, sort of questions or polls um, that I can fire out into uh, into the webinar. Um, you know, the, uh, I'll just get them out there right now. But there is: uh, Are you currently using CNC touch probe as part of your manufacturing process? Um, if yes, uh, you know what? How is it being utilized? And so there is some some polls there. So I'm just going to launch that out. Um, uh, the way the polling works, I have to do it uh, in pieces. So feel free, everybody, if you've uh, if you see the quick poll, um, it would be in your widget. Feel free to uh, to answer those questions. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, Glenn. I just thought I'd get that out there while you're sort of switching over. Yeah, I see some other comments about um, how do I add the tab. So it's just like adding in any other tab, but it is an option in Mastercam. So if you need to contact us to get that. So even if you had it, your post processor also needs to support it. And we can take care of that for you too, to modify your post processor to support simple probing. Okay, so let's have a look at a different machine, different menus, because that's what's nice about the Simcoe probing is that now I'm on a Heidenheim, so my whole interface is going to be different now. So for those who run Heidenheim, you'll probably recognize these diagrams and those macro calls. Hey, Lee, sorry, can you uh, close out the poll? Yeah, I'm uh, in the process of doing that. <laughs> is it on the screen? It's from what I'm seeing, yes, yeah. there it is. There we go. Perfect. 
And that was everybody got a chance to fill that out, did they? Yeah, it looks like it. That that's the first one. I'll I'll fire the next one out in a second here. You can carry on, Glenn. Yeah, I can see your screen now as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's important. <laughs> okay. So I was just looking at the menu for Heidenheim, and you can see that. Oops, I up here. So yeah, so under the three different areas, the alignment, the datum selection, it's all going to reflect the cycles that Heidenheim uses to do these. So these will already be on your machine. You're probably familiar with them a bit. Now you can program them right within Mastercam. So let's do a whole measurement, just like we did with the other one. So here I don't, because it's a new machine group, I don't have my holder, so I'll just go into my tool manager. And we'll grab this one, add it. So we'll select the same arc. And you can see so when I turn on these, now we don't get variable numbers, we get these Q parameters for storing information. Not sure why that one came up different. You can over, you can use a different one if you like. Changes those. Okay, so then the conditions then, if it's scrapped, same as before, we go to the end of the program. If it needs to be remachined, we go to a particular operation. So that would be the other one I added to this group. Folks within tolerance, carry on. So the nominal diameter, that's Shown there. So as you can see, these are similar to what you see on your height and control. Measuring height, a little less. Let's set up clearance and the clearance height. So if I move this over, you can see the difference. So here it has a drop down whether we're doing a three point measurement or a four point measurement. Whether it's circular or linear transition in between. And we'll our max and min values. Create a log if needed. Oops, I need to pick both of them. So without the uh, contour operation, it doesn't know what to do with it. So we have to highlight that one. So here's the contour, and there's the label up at the top of it. There's the actual cycle to do the measurement. There's the logic with the calls to whether it be the end of the program, the operation to recut it or just carry on with the rest of it. So that's, yeah, I could carry on doing other ones, but it's pretty much the same idea. Uh, if there's anything that you wanna add to that, uh, Ryan, but obviously each machine has its different options, but it's nice to have what the machine has is what we show in Mastercam Exactly. Yeah. And we try to kind of make a common workflow kind of across the board for if you do have different machines that way, you know, even though there's different parameters and different fields, we try to make it where at least it's a, it's a common ground of, of, you know, a routine program, of course, and same type of workflow. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, definitely the main 
um, infants there are certainly the you know the referencing of existing macros already on your machine of course and um, you know not having to uh, reload or you know do anything else out really outside of that if you're already using you know your, your probes as is so we uh, we do have some other questions as well um, uh, can I get can I get some pro for master cam 2022 version um, I would say you, I'll leave that to you, Ryan. I would say I would think that we could, uh, but obviously it would be better to be using the latest and greatest in the most yeah. version of Master. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the politically correct answer is going to be, uh, you know, yeah, you should be re running 2024 Master Cam, but uh, <laughs> but no, we we do have um, versions actually currently all the way back to 2018, uh, believe it or not. So um, although we uh, we do have 2024. Um, available and, and roughed in, I believe they plan on releasing it Monday, which then I believe um, is going to be the last version supported technically would be uh, 2019 at that case. We've been trying to uh, definitely yeah, have it back a, a number of versions um, in case, you know, sites don't upgrade or run a, you know, a couple years behind, whatever it would be. So. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, another question here. Thinking of this in the context of a production environment with serialized parts, is it possible to have measurement report output with the correct serialization number as they are created for each part in each production run? Um, I would say yes. I mean, obviously we'd want to get some more information to it, but initially going through my mind is I'm just thinking on uh, we do have some custom reporting options, and part of that we can reference uh, pieces of information in Mastercam in the post, but also then on the machine in a variable. So it probably would require some type of like counter, um, you know, I'm assuming, and I guess it would depend on too, like how complex your serialization would be. Um, but, uh, but then if we were to report out based on what that variable is set, which would naturally get incremented. Uh, I feel like something like that could potentially work. Yeah, but the again. component and the feature increments, that's within one program, right? So one program could make more than one part. But I guess what he's asking is at the end of every program, it would have to increment the component number, right? That what you're yeah, we'll probably do um, some type of like custom log feature as part of it, and then can reference like uh, a specific variable number on the control, which would basically say reference itself plus one, or you know, I, I guess you know, without knowing what the serialization looks like, but um, but but yeah, I think there's some possibilities there that it could be done. Yeah, it sounds like it can be done, uh, James. Um, Maybe what we can do is we can connect uh, after the webinar and get some more pertinent details, and uh, then we can, you know, with Glenn and, and Ryan, we can have a look at that for you and get you uh, a firm answer. Um, just had another question come in. Uh, do, 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 does the machine config files, so in brackets, uh, PST or MMD machine, uh, control and machine files uh, need to be configured for this add-on? Yeah, specifically the post-processor will need some modifications uh, in order to tie everything together. So, um, so, so yeah, obviously, yeah, the guys at in-house in the post department can definitely take care of that for yeah. you. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something uh, we've done for our customers already. Your own and, and others, you know, throughout the world, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not just in Canada. Um, okay, that's that's what we've got so far as far as questions. Glenn, were you? Um, I assume you had some more. Um, pretty much covered all there really is, other than okay. just different features. So if you want yeah. to put out that next poll question, maybe I guess. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Keep everybody engaged. Um, okay, so let's see. So this is a question that's uh, if you're not currently using um, question. If you have it and you're not using it, we're just curious as to as to why. No wrong answers. 
Um, let's see what we get back. We're starting to get some answers in here now. Appreciate everybody's feedback on this. And honesty, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I said no wrong answers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, there's only so many on the many sort of uh, inputs that I can do on these questions, so it's a little bit antiquated in that way. But that's a webinar go to webinar thing. Um, so there's just another question that came in: Are there many companies using this? Uh, you know, I, I I guess maybe I'll just defer to you, Ryan, because you you'll have a better um, you know overall grasp of North America as a whole, not just Canada. Um, but I can yeah. say for sure in Canada, yes, we have quite a few and, you know, actively we're bringing more and more on board. Um, but I could get uh, this question from Trevor. Trevor, I could get you some specifics if you want and, and even uh, some references. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and yeah, we, we have resellers, uh, obviously, worldwide, you know, selling and supporting the Simco probing product. Um, you know, it's been out since uh, 2018, you know, in the existence. So, you know, we're we're kind of um, maybe a little bit newer of a player compared to, you know, obviously some of the other solutions uh, to program your probing routines within Mastercam. Um, you know, but with that being the, the case, you know, obviously we're always, um, you know, trying to expand on that and, and build out, you know, even more machines. So um, I guess to answer your question, though, as far as accounts and licenses, um, that's Gosh, okay. I, you don't need to yeah, no I say know that. Man. Well, no, man, I don't know that for us either, either as well. It's just, uh, you know, we can, like I said, we can get the references and, and if yeah. people want that. Yeah, um, a couple hundred in the U.S. at least. So Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Um, I do have sort of a, this is a two-parter, and it was really just to a question on what probe uh, brand or machine control sort of do you currently have and if you're utilizing it. So I may as well fire that one out there while we're uh, while we're in the poll, quick poll thing here. Um, so there, this is part one. There is uh, other brands coming next. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of Renishaws, uh, but it's always nice to know if people are using others. And once this is done, just in, Another 10, 20 seconds here on the fire out part two. Um, and then it looks like we're getting a few more questions. So let me just close that out. And then part two. Maybe there's a couple others in there. So Glenn, sorry, for the most part, you were your demo is done. Well, yeah, I see. I see. There's a question regarding the difference between productivity plus and this. So, yeah, yeah. The productivity you plus. Yeah. yeah. Have to close the poll first, or yeah. Uh, just give them five more seconds here. Sure. We're making this super interactive. All right. Okay, Glenn. You're on screen now. So, yes, yeah, so I just pulled up a simple part that was done with Productivity Plus. So this comes with software from Renishaw, which has a totally different interface. So that it's still, yeah, it's a decent product also. It's But um, let me show you the output that you get. So it's got a lot more options for constructing geometry and dimensions that can be output. So if I was to... Let me just backplot this one here. It's just doing a simple measurement there and there. So if I post this out. So this does not utilize the built-in macros on the machine. What this does, it loads, well, it includes the macros with them. So you'll see there's a lot more math that's built into the program because it's not using the macros on the machine so this yeah it's a little overwhelming if you're trying to understand it but it does work but the programs are much much larger so all these here what you see below here like the actual initial program is 30 is to here 
and then the rest is all the macros that it uses. So it doesn't use 9800, it has its own. So it loads all these macros. Now, I don't need to load them every time, but the first time, all these macros would have to be loaded on the machine. So it would also then help you with, like for example, with being able to do surface probing, like the, the vector calculations and that. So it does take care of maybe a, a 5% that is not covered, but it does make everything else a little more complex. So you'll notice that would be in your toolpath menu here, this button here. Yeah, and I think maybe to add to that, Glenn, like um, you, what you touched on it, but the, the what you're saying is Simcoe uses the onboard, the already preloaded inspection plus macros, right, that people get with their probe, whereas right. P plus you have to load on P plus macros, and they're not the same. They're different. So Simcoe's utilizing your onboard stuff, whereas P plus, um, uh, I mean, obviously a tech a Renishaw tech needs to come out, needs to load those on. There's typically a testing day. Um, you know, there's there's a few more hoops to jump through, if you will, uh, from that aspect. So, um, yeah, they do. They use a lot more variables. So if you have an older machine that doesn't have a lot of variables available, you will run into trouble too. So. Yeah. Yes. One, one uh, thing I will add to it, though is is yeah, the <clears throat> we have clients actually running both. Believe it or not, too, and and uh, yeah, it just kind of all depends on on what um, what kind of parts and features you're you're trying to do. Um, you know, not necessarily Simcoe probing, but you know, just uh, chalk it up to inspection plus macros for Renishaw. You know, would would probably cover about eighty percent of, of clients, and in, in my opinion, as far as what functionality you can do. Uh, and naturally, we're limited by those inspection plus you know macros. Um, we're perhaps the productivity plus being all custom based you know, macros and a lot more advanced logic to it. Um, you know, the, the the more high end or um, tasking, you know, items that are you know, need to be need, um, maybe Inspection Plus wouldn't be able to do that. Obviously productivity could, um, you know, for those cases. So yeah, it, it just really depends on too, like what you're, what you're attempting to, to definitely do. Yeah. There was another question about, could you use more than one probe on the machine? And yeah, absolutely. So when I'm in the probe cycle, that first tab that comes up, so that's a five mil probe, I guess. If I were to go to my tool manager, I can use as many probes as possible. Like, so this, let me open up. See if I have some probe libraries here. So yeah, whatever tools you have loaded. So here's a one mil probe, two mil, so forth. So I can switch between them within one program. It just utilizes the tool number. So the tool number just is what it references. So if I was to do this with a smaller probe, you'll see that in the back plot. Also, the fact that it's very clear. So yeah, you can use uh, more than one probe. That answers that question. Uh, then we have a, another question. So you're saying we can use our CNC as a CMM? Um, I guess in theory, yes. I don't know if that would pass QC. Um, <laughs> but uh, I would, I'll, I'll leave that to you, Ryan. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we don't, we don't suggest it. And, and, and again, you know, I'll, I'll play the the politically correct card here as as far as it goes. I mean, uh, you know, technically, like any error that would be on your machine tool gonna uh, is right? obviously going to report out as yeah. being good, you know, versus a, a third, you know, kind of party uh, CMM or a different gauge for that matter, you know, is, is you know, where it should be, you know, or could show, you know, differences, you know. So um, a lot of cases, you know, use it as a, as a reference, obviously, and, and check your parts, you know, before taking it out of the vice, because that'll certainly save you a lot more time from having to re- you know, indicate or reset up or reprobe the parts, of course, just to have it sit in quality for, a, you know, a couple hours or a day or two, just, you know, for backlog and then come to find out it's, it's bad. 
that because of the feature. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you know it would really depend on sort of the the accuracy that you that you're trying to hit, right? The tolerancing that you're trying to hit. So it's possible. It's plausible. Um, yeah, but I think the the machine will make more money making chips than measuring <laughs> parts. Yeah, there are certain features that you do need to check before you take the part out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, doing a full on inspection would be a little overkill, and CMM would do it a lot. Exactly, or a Vera surf or something like that in order to do a third party check against it. Exactly. Um, do you have to activate the probing in Mastercam? So I think you sort of already touched on that, Glenn. It's just another ribbon bar. Um, obviously, you, you know, you, the, you have yeah, to so purchase you the, the simple license. probing, you get the software download and then the license, and then, you know, it's just like adding another tab. I don't know if you want to quickly show that off on the ribbon yeah, bar. Yeah, the tabs, you can yeah. set up custom tabs in yeah. Mastercam, but that when you do the install for it, it'll show up. Yeah. All the simple options. Uh, the next question would be, of course, it's a where do you want to put it? Because you can put it, uh, you can put it on an existing tab or right mouse button, click menu, you know, a brand new one if you wanted to, whatever it may be. So, yeah, I recommend putting it on the left because it does show all these graphics. And if you don't have enough screen space, you're going to not, it's going to show on the other side and it's a little bit cumbersome that way. But it has a really nice floating license. So if you have multiple seats, uh, the floating license, you can float it amongst multiple seats. And it's a software license. So even if you have a Mastercam hardware SIM or NetHasp, the license for Simcoe, just like other Simcoe products, DNC Max or the professional editor, has a very nice floating license option. Okay. Um, are there any plans for Simcoe probing to fill the gaps and be able to do what P plus can do and vice versa? Um, so Ryan, I think I'll let you speak to the first part, obviously vice versa where uh, from a productivity plus standpoint, um, you know, we're, we can't say for sure, uh, but we've got Ryan here for Simcoe, so we can let Ryan address the the first part of the question. Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, I, I I mean, I'm pretty confident in in, in ballparking, and, you know, and in, in using like like I said, my eighty percent, you know, kind of um, you know opinion on that as far as you know, what co companies are trying to do um, and what the Inspection Plus stuff, you know, can do. Um, you know, some other things, obviously, like Productivity Plus is made by Renishaw, only for Renishaw. For us, you know, we're also building out two other machine tool, you know, programs, uh, Bloom, working on Marpos, uh, you know, Hexagon down the road, um, and also introducing Lathe, right? So there are some, you know, obviously key aspects and differences between um, if it's a matter of, you know, we're talking that top 20% or, or, or so, you know, as far as additional functionality, um, you know, I guess I can't say that we've discussed it in, in great depths in those cases, um, but realistically, um, you know, it's a lot of just FANUC macro B stuff. So, you know, it's not any like smoke and mirrors, I guess, at the end of the day, it's just knowing like the FANUC macro B stuff uh, the Inspection Plus could certainly get you that data, uh, but then obviously needing to do the calculations is, is obviously the tough part. So, um, yeah, so I, I guess can, in the I can say future, from my standpoint, yeah. like Simcoe probing has is constantly being uh, improved, um, or you know, year over year, there's more and more being added to it. Um, so there's an active team that are uh, working on the development of it and, and taking sort of customer requests and things like that. So. Short answer is yes. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I would also say to that too, like, you know, obviously with us, right, being outside of Mastercam, we can release on our own schedules, you know, as far as that. So we don't need to wait for a, a yearly or, you know, maybe a quarterly, you know, kind of update um, as part of it. So, um, but I, I would say too, and, and like we've worked with different, you know, resellers and customers, of course, that um, have said, hey, it'd be really nice, or I think it'd be really beneficial if this was in there. And some of those suggestions, I mean, we've we've actively, actively implemented and, and are actively as well, um, you know, implementing in there. Cause again, it's, um, something a little bit custom but it actually uh you know we felt like it would actually really help out you know overall um and, and be a nice feature on the product so 
So needless to say, yeah, if there's anything, by all means, uh, let, let in-house know or they can pass along to me, whatever it may be. So we can definitely um, take, a, take a look at that specifically if there's something in, in mind. Great, great. Um, is this available for the HLE, the whole learning edition? I don't so, believe yeah, so. Unfortunately not, because uh, HLE does not allow for the C hook, so they're on add-in option. Yeah, um, 30 day trial. 30 days simple but, trial is the way to go, right? Exactly. Yeah, we can yeah. do a 30 day uh, trial um, if you wish. Yeah. Lee and the yep. Yeah, there's just, obviously a little bit of work involved. So, with, you know, with something like this being so specific and it being an add on, um, you know, you could trial it, but know that there is some upfront work to actually make it work. But from a software standpoint, if you're just going to be, you know, playing around with it in, in uh, in Mastercam and not, you know, firing it out on the machine, uh, that's that's a viable option as opposed to the HLE. Uh, next question, does Simcoe probing also have tool probing or only touch probing for now? Uh, so any of the tool probing stuff, um, in most cases, uh, because it's usually a breakage check or a measurement, um, is is implemented into the post with you know mostly a prompt sometimes a you know a miscellaneous value so we don't necessarily have a GUI for it and and kind of the main reason up to this point is because there's no geometry selection needed um, it's basically a matter of telling it you know the macro with the tool number and then it knows already where the tool setter is so uh, typically in those cases we we have that handled via the post side of things which uh, which again in house is it's certainly done in, in, in different cases, so. Okay. I think that might be it. Uh, we're at one hour now, um, but uh, everybody, mostly everybody is still with us. We've lost a few, uh, but not that many. So um, we're still here. If you have any other questions, please uh, type in. Uh, it sounds like Glenn has sort of done the bulk of his demo as well, but uh, we'll, we'll stay here for a bit. Otherwise, we do appreciate everybody joining us. If you have any sort of residual questions or if you think of something later, by all means, uh, send me an email. Send Glenn an email. Uh, send your rep an email. Um, of course, we can do a demo specific to your application as well. Thanks for your time, everyone. Have a good weekend. And yeah, it looks like we, yeah, we don't have any other questions. So uh, I think we can we can wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. We uh, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Ryan. We can get oh, one more no, question. One then. more Will question. Tech need to come. Will a tech need to come to make sure it works in CNC. I've done a couple installs myself, and it was seamless. Like it really worked well. There was one where it was it was a five axis. Um, it doesn't like a twist, like as long as the rotations were done correctly. So there was a bit of a minor way, issue with setting the planes. Yeah. Like I've done a Puma, Matsura, Oz, and it was very seamless, less involved than with the Productivity Plus. Right. Um, we have done installations remotely, specifically, you know, where we can't uh, have a tech on site. So it, it can be done. Um, like Glenn's saying. So it's not mandatory to have a tech. Obviously it's beneficial, uh, but it is not required. Yeah, and the only other thing I would add to that is, um, right, especially if you're if you're already probing and utilizing your probe, um, you know, as is, you know, then at least we know, or an in-house knows, you know, it's calibrated and, and things like that. Some of the prerequisites, right? Yeah. Um, is, is kind of done, so that takes that. Uh, what would be of on-site, you know, and, and, and kind of checks that box off the list at least, so. Just wait to 10 more seconds here and then otherwise we'll sign off. Okay, good to go. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Talk soon. Have a good day. Good weekend.